Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Clark. I was a 2012 uh, scholarship recipient and uh, just going to give you a brief presentation on what I've been up to the past several years and uh, the scholarship itself. Uh, so the agenda is going to be just a quick background, the actual scholarship and what's gone on since then. So I'll start off with when I caught the aviation bug. Um, <laughs> When I was about six years old, my mom took me right out to this parking lot, and there was a B-17 here, and I fell in love. Um, it's my favorite airplane ever since, and I knew I wanted to be a pilot at that point. Soon after, um, I was about probably seven or eight years old, and my mom got a job at M&H Uniforms, which was the company that provided uniforms for Alaska Airlines. And so I would go there after school and talk to the pilots. I love talking to them. They're always very friendly to me. Uh, I started drawing pictures of warbirds and trying to sell them to the pilots when they come through, so I made a lot of good contacts that way. And I actually met Mike Swanigan, who was pretty high up with Alaska at the time, and he got me into a day camp um, to go flying. So this was my first ride here. This was on Galvin's ramp, I believe. Um, and so got my first ride and got to fly the airplane a little bit, and I was just falling in love. It was an absolute blast. Uh, this airplane, shortly after, I was waiting to get my second ride, and uh, had a gear up landing. And I watched it have a gear up from the ramp, and I talked them into giving me a second ride in a different airplane. So I got two on the same day. And uh, absolutely thrilled. So, uh, so this is uh, me in probably freshman year. Um, I built a lot of model airplanes, and uh, you know they started small with pretty small balsa ones, and then got large, and even larger than this one here. Um, and that's, that's what I did. And, to kind of get my, my aviation bug uh, need. And so um, I got commissioned actually to build this one and I started making a little bit of a business uh, at the local RC field. Um, so I was in middle school and when I was in middle school I went to uh, school in Covington which was near Crest Air Park. Several of the students there uh, had parents that lived at Crest so I started hanging out at Crest and I was overwhelmed because everyone had their own airplanes and hangars and I didn't know that world existed. So I started going there about every weekend and did this into high school as well. And uh, I played football in high school, and one of the kids that was kind of up and coming on the team, I was kind of mentoring. He became my workout partner, and his parents owned some airplanes at Crest. And I asked if I could come along for a ride sometime, and they gave me a ride. And when I went there, I, I, you know, I knew what all the airplanes were, and I was talking to them about them, and they saw that I was passionate. So that Christmas, um, I got a... a card from that family that said they wanted to teach me to fly in their 140. And uh, I just, I got a shot. I got really, really lucky. Around that time, uh, I started my flight training and somebody told me about the Cascade Warbird Scholarship. And I never thought that I would get it. I didn't even think it was maybe even worth putting an application in. But uh, I did and I was very surprised when I got a call in May that I got the scholarship and uh, that I was going to go to ground school. And around this time, I was volunteering here at the Museum of Flight on my weekends and just trying to get around the aviation community. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I started working full time here at the Museum of Flight for summer break. And so during summer break, I was flying. And on my weekends, I was going to Galvin Ground School uh, through the scholarship and graduated the ground school. Um, then uh, after this, is, this was my instructor, Molly Littlefield, and one of the greatest people I've ever met. Um, and uh, so went through high school. I graduated the ground school. Right out of high school, I got my pilot's license uh, at Port Townsend with Summer Martell and did the check ride in the 140. Um, shortly after, I know I was young, but I proposed. I grew up to wife, Rachel. Well, the 140 is very special to me, so I made sure that it was involved. Um, and I, when, right when I got out of high school, I started working construction. I uh, worked graveyards in construction, and then during the day I went to college for aviation. Um, then I did all the flying that I could do. Uh, any airplanes that needed ferried, or talking people into like, giving me rides and that kind of thing, and just building time, and uh, had the opportunity to fly a Super Cub uh, to Oshkosh, and it was a lot, it was like 36 hours of flight time to get there. Um, but I got to stay on some, I got to stay at, uh, couple farms on the way there and camp out. It's an absolute blast, but um, it's one of the greatest experiences I've had so far with flying. Uh, around the same time, I was also working on an N3N restoration uh, with uh, a local Tom Jensen that lives at Evergreen and met Kent and a lot of other great people there. 
Uh, this was us at Oshkosh uh, when one of the organizers heard the story that an 18-year-old and 19-year-old flew a Super Cub to Oshkosh from Seattle. They brought us up to the vintage circle uh, with the Vega in the background and the QED, and that little Cub looked so cool, but the airplanes. But, um, so, and then while I was there, I got to fly a VT-18 and, and uh, get a ride in a tri-motor. So Oshkosh was a really great place, a lot of fun experiences. Uh, when I got back, I had enough time to start towing gliders. Uh, I didn't have my single engine commercial, so I was volunteering on the weekends, a little time there, and uh, put a lot of time in that Super Cub. And uh, there's doing a tow rope drop. Uh, along the way, I've gotten to fly some neat airplanes, and you know, it's just when the opportunity arises. It's it's uh, when there's an open seat and you kind of hang around an airplane, as I'm sure a lot of you know. Every once in a while, someone asks you to come along, and I got to fly some neat stuff. And then uh, Rachel and I, we got married uh, December 13th, 2014, and everything was perfect. I was supposed to get my instrument rating. I was exchanging some work for some flight time. And uh, right after we got married, I met a guardrail on a motorcycle. So I had a, uh, a little bit of a hiccup there. I, I broke my femur and I tore up my shoulder pretty bad. And uh, so I, that was like a year of physical therapy and surgeries and stuff. So it was three days before my instrument check ride that this happened. And so first person I called actually was my examiner to tell them I couldn't make it because my, my leg was broken. So um, it was very understanding. Then I was in a sling and, and uh, limping around, but Rachel and I still stayed active in the community and went to fly-ins and everything and just kept around it. Uh, I got a lot of time on my hands at that time. I had been, I doubled up on my course load at school because uh, I couldn't really walk or do a lot. And so I was just trying to get my degrees finished up. But in the meantime, I was going a little bit crazy. And so I found on Barnstormers one day a Simpson 108-3 that was for sale, the Port Townsend uh, Aero Museum. And so I went and picked up that project, and, and uh, that's my, my restoration project. Um, this is my niece here. And uh, I named the airplane after my grandma. She was one of my biggest supporters. So uh, Simpson's going to be Barbara May, and it's going to be painted in the original Simpson maroon. That's her favorite color. Uh, I was in a sling, and I was stripping paint all summer. My wife helped me a whole bunch on it. Uh, here's the project, close to how it is now. I learned how to weld uh, from the GBQED. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that airplane. The welder of that aircraft is very generous and taught me how to weld and has been kind of mentoring me. So I made uh, one of the rotisseries. The other one was actually the GB's rotisserie um, that my Stinson is on now. Uh, I soda blasted the aluminum uh, wing panels and uh, soon the fuselage will be uh, bead blasted and, and uh, epoxy primed. So meanwhile, I finished up my instrument rating. I got hired at Clay Lacey, where my wife works up front, and uh, had a great time there. Was there for about a year and a month, and met a lot of great pilots, made a lot of great contacts, and got to meet politicians and celebrities. And it's just a very, very interesting place to work with. A lot of cool airplanes, as you can see. Um, I, there's a lot of times at Clay Lacey where we'd have a slow evening, so I got to study and you know, get ahead on, on some of my schoolwork, and also um, I got my commercial license while I was there working at Clay Lacey. And shortly after, I got my multi-engine commercial license, and I got a, uh, a scholarship for that that, that helped tremendously, because as you guys know, multi-time is, is kind of pricey. Um, and so one day, um, I was, I was sitting in the lobby and I was studying for my multi-commercial and a pilot walked in that I had also had some experience with before and uh, I had a good dynamic kind of going because I gave one of their passengers a ride to uh, their hotel one time on a slow evening so that they didn't have to wait for a taxi. That uh, passenger turned out to be an owner of this airplane right here. Um, I didn't know that at the time, but they were a very, very sweet person and I had a great talk with them on the way to the hotel. and. I guess it got back to the, the chief pilot, and that went uh, well. But they didn't know I was a pilot until he saw me studying for my, my exam. Um, shortly after, like a few days after I finished my multi-commercial check, right, I got a call, and he said, hey, can you be down at Boeing in about an hour on the ramp? Um, bring your wife along as well. And so Rachel and I got dressed up, and we went down there, met him on the ramp, and he said, okay, we're going to Lake Chelan. So we got a ride in Lake Chelan. We had just been in that exact parking spot about a week ago in a Super Cub, and this is you know, quite the difference. But we flew along with the owner, we rode in the cabin, and, and then rode back and made it time, back in time for work. And then uh, right after that, we had about 45 minutes till work started, and they had me do three takeoffs and landings in the Citation, and told me they wanted to bring me on as a part-time pilot for their outfit. Uh, they operate two Citation Excels, uh, 
They also have another citation in Boise, and they also have a citation 10 that was recently acquired in uh, pretty soon I'll be doing a check out the Citation 10, which is a beautiful airplane, one of my favorite airplanes. But um, so I did my takeoffs and landing. Since this uh, picture, um, I've flown to Spokane several times in this airplane. Mm -hmm. I flew it to Boston and also to San Francisco. And uh, we're just going to keep it's very part time, but whenever they call, I'd make sure I'm available and, and go for it. Uh, so what's what's the current of it? This this picture is uh, Rachel and I camping in the Super Cup. But so what's going on currently? is uh, I just finished up at Clay Lacey about a week ago. It was my last day and left on great terms there, just pursuing my CFI. I'm getting very close to getting my CFI. I was already hired at uh, Rainier Flight Service. I interviewed about a week and a half ago. And the second I get my CFI done, I'm going to give them a call and, and get me started there. Um, Part-time corporate flying, as well as uh, got the bachelor's degree that will be hopefully finished this fall. And, uh, and then I'm also the owner of that corporate company. I'm also going to be flying him around a little bit in a turbocharged Baron in a Bonanza that, or his uh, personal airplane. Um, so that's what I'll be doing actually this week. Future plans, uh, I want to flight instruct full time. Uh, I'll be brought on with that citation group full time after a certain amount of experience. I want to do tailwheel and aerobatic instruction and I have a lead on someone that does that in a super decathlon and I'm very excited to pursue that opportunity. Uh, also down the road, I want to fly for Air National Guard. I've wanted to fly for the military for a very long time. I didn't quite make it. There, there's a lot of great applicants for the Naval Academy, and that's mm -hmm. what I was trying for. I didn't make the cut. So um, I'm happy with how my routes worked out so far, and I'm very content, but I would love to fly for Air National Guard. So why I did this presentation is I just want to express my gratitude to this group. Um, when I got this scholarship, it came at a time in my life where I was at a crossroads. There was, um, there's no one in my family that has ever gone to, no one's taken a college class in my extended family or my immediate family. Um, I've only had two graduate high school in my family. So I was really wanting to pursue aviation, but it didn't seem like it was possible. And through uh, Keith and Molly Littlefield and through Cascade Warbirds, I was given an opportunity and I capitalized on that opportunity. And so, I hope that my actions in the last five years have shown that I do appreciate this very much and it's very important to me. Um, it really did change my life, so thank you all. <laughs>